everybody. Welcome to Dylan Talks Tone. Today we're going to talk about humidity and we're going to talk about managing your guitars and how you should store them, should you leave them out, like that sort of thing, because we want to play them, right? But seasons are changing. Stuff's moving around. Things are, you know, going to have to make some adjustments. So how can we minimize that stuff? What can we do? There's a couple of tools. Uh, what are the recommended numbers? All that kind of stuff. So let's get into, first of all, uh, the effect that the rising and falling of humidity and temperature has on your guitar. Obviously, this is a McPherson carbon fiber sable. It's zero, right? I've had this thing in the case for a month. Didn't even tune it. Perfectly in tune. Checked it with a tuner. Perfectly in tune. 100% stable. Absolutely amazing. And that's what the beauty of this is, right? But for most of us who have wooden guitars is the conventional thing, we might have to worry about it a little bit more. Let's look at electric guitars first. So your conventional electric guitar is obviously wood most of the time, right? And so as the moisture enters into wood, uh, it is going to expand it. As it leaves wood, it's going to shrink it. So most of the time, here's a couple things you're gonna see on an electric guitar when you have either of those conditions. When the air dries out and the humidity falls, you can start to have little fret ends because the fret end edges, because the wood shrinks, but the frets obviously don't. And so they start sticking out the end. Before you go filing on your guitar, you can manage the humidity in your environment and around the guitar. We'll talk about how to do that in a few minutes um, and see if you can get that back because sometimes it's just a matter of managing the humidity in the room and you don't need to file anything, okay? The other thing that'll happen is, as moisture enters into the wood, the wood will expand, like we talked about, and it will push up the middle of the neck, effectively changing the neck relief on our guitar. If it shrinks, a lot of times, it will fall and then it, the neck will curl up. Think of like, you know, what a tortilla does when you, when you dry it out, it cooks and it curls up. Same thing, wood, wood, the wood would do the same thing, especially because it's under tension. So it's gonna do that. So it'll go this way, the center will go down and your action will come up. Your neck relief, not your action. Other than that, electric guitars aren't really that sensitive, okay, to this kind of stuff. Now certain nitrocellulose finishes, obviously this one doesn't matter because it's a relic, but Certain nitrocellulose finishes will also react to high humidity and low humidity, but typically in most living conditions, it won't matter. Uh, guitars with binding, we'll get into that in a minute on the acoustic stuff, but you wanna make sure that it doesn't dry out and that wood shrinks and it separates from the binding. Other than that, electric guitars are pretty hardy when it really comes to it. Just a little adjustment on the truss rod a couple of times a year. Now let's talk about wooden acoustic guitars. Now wooden acoustic guitars are totally different because not only is the wood all exposed on the inside because uh, we have, you know, this very thin wood that's not finished and it's very susceptible to humidity and drying out changes. So the humidity changes up and down. Not only that, the construction of the guitar is totally different. An electric guitar, the, the object is to isolate the vibration over the pickups and turn that kinetic energy into electricity. On an acoustic guitar, it's to move air, right? We're literally, it's like a drum. When we strike the string, we vibrate this top and it actually moves air to our ear. So the concept of how the guitar works is totally different. So at this point, how the wood moves, uh, how the wood swells and shrinks all matters. So same situation as the electric guitar, when it comes to the fret ends and when it comes to the neck relief, um, coming up when it swells with humidity and shrinks and goes down when uh, it dries out. But then we have the added situation of most, a lot of acoustic guitars have binding. So we don't want that uh, wood to shrink and then separate from the binding or from the rosette, or actually you can, it'll pop the, uh, finish underneath the pick guard and sometimes you'll see the, the pick guard curl up uh, if it dries out. Uh, the other thing that can happen is you can develop cracks because what will happen is the arched strength of the outside of the body of an acoustic guitar is really strong actually. And so as this top shrinks, what can happen is it'll start to 
kind of break apart and it'll give you these weird waves. It'll shrink, it'll belly down, like down into the guitar. If the humidity is too high, it'll do the opposite. The moisture won't have anywhere to go in the wood and it'll actually swell it. So you can look across the flat top of an acoustic guitar that's been subjected to a lot of humidity and it'll push the top up and you'll have this like bulbous looking top on the top. So uh, managing humidity with acoustic guitars is actually really important. Um, much more important than with electric guitars. So what's the recommended humidity? Well, you can go on the internet and see all kinds of things. Um, and of course, wood, different woods and stuff are going to react to humidity a little differently. But the general rule, without you know making a hard and fast rule, uh, please let me know in the comments what you, how you keep your house and if it's effective for managing your guitars. Please put your you know what, where you where you like to keep your guitar room. Um, but the kind of widely known uh, spec, I guess is for somewhere between 40 and 55% humidity. Um, so what can change this? Well, obviously where you live. If you live in Arizona, it's gonna be a lot brighter and you're gonna, or drier, and you're gonna have to worry about bringing the humidity up. Now I live in the Southeast of the United States and in the summertime, it's very difficult to keep the humidity out of the air. If we don't run the air conditioning constantly or you know regularly, the, the Air gets very humid here and the humidity goes way up. So we need to make sure that we always have electricity in our guitar playing room so that we can manage that. The other thing that can change it is as we get into winter time, which is where we are now, um, as we make this video, forced air heat and wood heat and those sorts of things will dry out the air. This is why you have to use more lotion in the winter and chapstick and stuff, because the air is drier because of the way we heat our homes when it's cold outside. Less humidity in the air, might have to worry about adjusting our guitar a little bit, might have to worry about managing our acoustic guitars, especially our nice ones. So let's look at a couple of ways where we can understand how to do this. Uh, and we're gonna talk about storage and that sort of stuff. We'll talk about how to combat that and keep track of it. So this is the spot in the living room where I keep my two uh, acoustic guitars. Sometimes they're electrics, but right now I'm playing my Breedlove Premier, uh, Rosewood back and sides, uh, and of course I just got this D28. So I've been playing it a lot. So here's the situation though. When you leave an acoustic guitar out of the case like this for a long period of time, uh, it exposes it to whatever humidity changes. So here's what I did. I got one of these cheap hygrometers right here and it's got a magnet on the back it literally just sticks on the metal screw of that light switch uh, and it just stays there all the time and so right now we have 46 percent humidity and 70 degrees in this room i'm okay with that um i'm okay with that so we'll just put that back up there and that should be totally fine i think I think we'll be okay, but I'm gonna want to watch. If that drops below about 45, I'm gonna start keeping a better eye on it because I don't want the guitars to dry out much more um, than about 40. Okay, so here's the question though. What do you do if you start to have to worry about it? Obviously, if the humidity drops much lower than it is, then I'm not gonna wanna leave my guitars out while I'm not playing them. As long as the humidity is stable, I don't worry about it. But like I said, I don't want it to drop much lower than that. Then I think it's probably most important to go ahead and put the guitar back in the case because this case is a smaller space and it will not vary as much with the humidity changes with the whole room. It's a smaller space once you put it in here then you know if the humidity goes up and down a bunch in the room over the course of a day because of your forced air heating, that sort of thing, then inside the case, it's gonna be happening much more slowly and it's not gonna be as drastic. It's gonna take those peaks and valleys out of it uh, and keep your guitar better kind of in the good mid range of the 40 to 55% humidity. There's another thing we can do. Though. I'm using these D'Addario humidity packs, okay? And I'll leave a link to them in the description. And what they are is a little cloth bag. And it's got these refills in it that you can buy separately once they dry out, the Humida packs. 
And I got two different models of this, so you'll want to make sure that you get the right one for what you need. There's like a restore, so like if you've got a guitar that's over-humidified or over-dried out, uh, they've got a restore one. But for this one that's in great shape, we're starting from new, we are um, in relatively close, but I kind of don't want to worry about it, humidity ranges, um, then the maintain one is the one we want. And so what we do is we put this in here and it's like a permeable cloth that allows that stuff to do what it does. And it's got a little sticky so it stays closed like that. Okay. And this one we'll put underneath the peg head of the guitar. Okay. And this one actually has two of them in there. See they're they're in there. And what we'll do is we'll just put this on this side of the strings and this on this side of the strings and that will hang inside the guitar. Then when we close the case, latch it all up, then we will be able to maintain the humidity for longer periods of time um, in order to maintain our guitar. Now every few months you'll have to change these out, change those little bags out probably every four or five months or so. Uh, it kind of depends on how uh, much your humidity needs to move. So if you're close to the range, it will last longer. If it's really dry or really humid, it will not last as long. So what about just leaving them out like this? Because personally, I don't know about you, but personally I play more if the guitar is handy. Right? Like if you have to go in the other room, get it out of the case, do the thing, you're, you know, you're not going to just pick it up. A lot of times I'm walking out the door and, you know, maybe Leslie's like, oh, I'm going to be out in a minute. Or I have 30 seconds or a minute before I have to leave. I will literally grab this guitar, put it on my knee, put my foot up on the coffee table, strum a few chords, mess around, put it back, walk out the door. Like I get little 30 second, minute and a half, two minute little sessions here and there throughout the day to play because they're hanging right here. Some people would say that this is not cool on the guitar. As long as you're within reason of those humidity ranges uh, from 40 to 55% in your room, you're not gonna hurt anything. I use these Zither Co Music Company stands and they are really stable. They work really, really awesome. And uh, plus Tony's a great guy. Uh, I've got two of these. I've had them for a very long time. Um, even with pets around, you can't knock them over. They're just, they, they're really stable and they work, work really well. I guess my point is, is be concerned about the care of your guitar, right? Like you don't want, I don't want my Breedlove and I don't want my Martin drying out. I don't want to have problems with them. But don't let that scare you from having the thing sitting in your living room and play it because that's what it's for, you know what I mean? So just maybe go get one of these. I'll, I'll leave a link to this in the description. Stick it close to wherever your guitars are and just walk by and make sure it's kind of within the range. And if it starts to get without, you know, out of that range, then worry about it a little bit more. If you don't want to worry about it at all, get one of these or get a close carbon fiber guitar um, because then you don't have to worry about it at all and so for a practicing kick around the living room guitar they're a fantastic idea because of that so you know a couple of little options there so you don't have to worry overly about babying your guitars too much and worrying about this just play the darn things anyway that's what I'm gonna do it's Saturday afternoon actually so I'm gonna sit here I'm gonna play some more guitar Thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week. And um, I think as you are watching this video, I'm getting another tooth pulled. So I'm not having a whole lot of fun today. So uh, thanks, thanks for hanging out. Uh, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, the like button. If you have any questions about this stuff, put it in the description. We'll try to include it in another, or in the comments, we'll try to include it in another video. Uh, also check out our other YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash Dylan and Leslie for all of our off topic stuff, knives and coffee and that kind of stuff. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you soon.